guys? Joe Snow right here today with a small weekend project for those still having an iPhone 4 roaming around. So, today I gotta show you how to create a custom made far more for this iPhone 3.1, 3.2 or 3.3, which means iPhone 4 with all its free iterations that you can use with K-Loader, and I'm gonna explain what K-Loader is, but basically it's a very powerful application. And with this video, I'm going to start a long series of creation for a tutorial that will basically, at the end, will help you to create a uh, phone that, that runs two different operating systems on it. For example, you can also run iOS 6 and iOS 7.1.2 at the same time, dual boot. But not in this video, but this is the beginning of it. I'm going to make you, um, to let you know how to use the K-Loader, how to use the applications on a Mac, because you need a Mac, unfortunately, for that. But for uh, my friends on Windows, you can use, um, I don't know, you can use VirtualBox, which is uh, right here, an application that works for Windows, Linux, and uh, OS X2. And uh, also you can uh, you can use VM player or something like that VMware player. It's an application like this that you can run uh, OS X on it. You can also create a Hackintosh and I'm going to cover that on another tutorial. Just tell me in the comment section. But before we introduce this um, the small project aside of my iPhone 6, 5, 5s and so on project, I decided to make this one too, because I don't want to, um, to leave the iPhone 4 to fade on the darkness. Uh, and I don't want to only focus on the newer devices, because iPhone 4 still have a lot to prove. And um, I started this uh, series just because I managed to install iOS 8.1 on my iPhone 4 by creating custom-made farmers. So this phone is not pretty much dead. But before we start creation, the creation of the uh, K-Loader compatible um, firmware, I just want to show you something that I found on the um, on the internet and uh, it's on 9to5Mac right here from January 19, pretty old if you ask me, but it's still interesting. In the iOS 9 code, it says iOS 9 code suggests iPhone 7 could experiment with a life high tech, likely confirms headphone jack going away. So basically a jailbreaker and developer you can find in the description that I'm going to credit for for his discoveries, have discovered, of course, in his code, while trying to decrypt something or while trying to disassemble something, disassemble something, that there is a uh, reference to headphone have no input. So, um, as you can see here, it's it's been widely reported that iPhone 7 is destined to ditch the uh, dated headphone jack in favor of wireless audio solutions and a lightning adapter for wired headphone and speakers. And now internal iOS software code seems to uh, seems to all but confirm the rumor. Uh, the jailbreaker claims to have discovered a reference to uh, headphone have no input within the last iOS 9.3. Why it's important? Because Li-Fi is pretty much a new connection type. And um, let's let's read right here what Li-Fi really means, just pretty, pretty fast. Li-Fi Light Fidelity is a bi-directional, high-speed and fully networked wireless communication technology similar to wireless Wi-Fi. The term was coined by uh, Harold Haas and is a form of visible light communication and a subset of optical wireless communication, OWC, and could be a complement to RF communication Wi-Fi and cellular network, or even a replacement in the context of data broadcasting. It is so far measured to be about 100 times faster than some wireless implementations, reaching speeds of 224 gigabits per second. So basically it's a faster wireless communication, uh, something like that. And this guy right here that I'm going to credit in the description has basically um, discovered code in iOS 9.3, even before any uh, iPhone 7 being uh, released, that basically tells you that Apple is uh, playing around with the Li-Fi new connection and might, of course, mean that the uh, headphone jack might be dropped as for iPhone 7. You can read the whole article in the description. I'm gonna put a link as well as to the Twitter of the, um, the jailbreaker who discovered the um, the code. And uh, yeah, this was pretty much something introductive because I really wanted to show you that. Uh, it, it looked pretty interesting for me. And uh, yeah, so let's start with K-Loader. What is K-Loader first? 
Kloader is basically an application created by WinLCM, a uh, probably very known jailbreaker and iOS developer. And um, it's a part of iOS key exact utilities and so on. It has a strange name if you ask me. But those are basically complementary um, tools that you have to use in a row. So EMG3 Maker creates the EMG3 file that you need from the crypted boot chain. The IDSS patch created a patched IDSS file to, um, you can also use it for uh, going in soft DFU mode directly from the uh, springboard if you uh, use a K loader. K loader image loader for the kernel, bootstraps custom image in the RAM and multi K loader that we're going to cover in another video. So after we got um, a little bit familiar with the uh, tools themselves, what we need. We need a custom made firmware, so we're going to get the original IPSW and the uh, the tools from right here. When you download ADCS, it's in the description, it's pre compiled so you don't have to compile it, because if you take it from here, you have to create it, you have to make it, the code is in C++ or C, therefore you need to create it. But I give you the already created version in uh, the description, so, what do you need to do? You take the, um, you go here on Odyssey, you go to Mac OS. Here is the file you're going to need to put on your phone, but we're not go going to cover that now. So in the Mac OS, you gotta take the uh, IPSW file and put it right here, because it contains firmware bundles, for example, for 7.1.2 iOS, uh, iOS 7.1.2, iPhone 3.1, those bundles contain the patches for ASR, for IBEC and IBSS, exactly what you need, and also an info.plast file that basically has the keys, because you need keys for that. The far more keys can be found on the iPhone wiki, but also are contained in here. So, can I use this on newer devices? No and yes. For example, as you can see here, I have bundles for the iPhone 5.2 as well, but you cannot use Kloader, you can use it to create a custom-made firmware with pounded IBSS, IBEG and so on, but you can't use Kloader because one, Kloader supports only x32 devices and two, Kloader only supports Limerine devices, therefore you need to, uh, to work with an iPhone 4, 3GS, 3G and so on. As I said, older devices. Okay, so let's go to, um, to the creation part, you need to open terminal if you don't have it right here, you go here in the launch pad and you write terminal and you click to open it. It's not something very hard. You need to CD into this folder, drag it from here to here and you will be inside the folder. Now you need to write dot slash and IPSW, see if it works, yes it does. So now you need to input a target IPSW, which is this one which is the original IPSW from Apple server. And now leave a space and name the uh, custom-made firmware. I'm gonna name it custom-made firmware.ipsw. And this is basically what you need to do. It will say hashing the IPSW. This will take a little bit, make sure the IPSW is here in this folder, as well as the uh, firmware bundles. Do, do not delete anything, everything is important. And you will see a few scrolling text as normal. You're probably uh, familiar with creation of custom made farmers from this channel. And um, yeah, it says loading, and it will probably start scrolling a lot of text. You can also use the uh, components from here to create manually the IPSWs for iPhone 5, for iPhone 5C, for S, and so on if you have the keys. You can also use it to create the appropriate firmware for, I don't know, mm, I got a segmentation fold. Let me see. Apparently I've got a segmentation fold, which means that I need to uh, basically fix it. So I managed to fix the problem by just downloading again the ODCS tools containing the Mac OS folder and every application. Probably a problem with the firmware bundles themselves or probably a problem with any application from here, nobody knows. But most likely it's a problem with the firmware bundle. So if you see the segmentation fault on your application, just download again the ODCS tools and it might work. I don't know why is that. But now as you can see it started to um, to build the uh, IPSW. And uh, here we go. You can also restore the IPSW 
if you uh, put your phone in pound a DFU mode, and I'm gonna show you how to do that in a, another tutorial. You can use it with Purple Restore or with iDevice Restore, which is the equivalent for the Libby mobile device on Windows. So uh, the creation process will take, for example, I don't know, 10 minutes or something like that. Now it's building again, the Farmore. And I'm gonna put pause and be back. See, now the uh, custom-made farmer has been created right here. It's custom-made You can start restoring it with uh, pound at DFU mode if you want, or we can extract the files that we need. I'll be back in a few seconds. Now you can uh, rename it to zip. Use zip and click on extraction. It will expand the uh, custom-made farmer. I'll be back. So now you go to firmware, to uh, DFU, right here, and you have the IDSS, which is this file right here, just a second. Okay, so this is the IDSS file you can use with the um, K-loader from here. Now I'm going to continue this on the next video in which I'm going to show you how to use the K-loader as well as the uh, IBSS we created in order to, um, to go into the uh, soft DFU mode. And in the next video on this series that you can find the playlist on the description, if you want to save the playlist for the, the, new, um, the new videos, I'm going to show you also how to use a K-Loader to dual boot the iPhone 4. So um, this is it for the moment. This is how you create the uh, IBSS, the pounded IBSS, as well as the uh, modified custom-made firmware from here. You you can now rename it to, um, to IPSW. And you've got your own a custom-made firmware for the iPhone 4. Now, uh, as I said, this is the uh, file that we were uh, waiting for. It's the IDSS file that I'm going to save here apart. Kloader doesn't run on, um, on the Mac. You have to put it on, um, on the iPhone using the SSH. Of course, you need a jailbreak, but this is not a problem on the iPhone 4 or lower. So, uh, yeah, this is basically it for today, guys. I'm going to uh, continue this series. And uh, also tell me in the uh, comment section down below if you have any special requirements for me to do on this topic. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.